Hey y'all, it's Dijon Paul, and this is the Sassy Auntie Podcast. Ooh, girl, no, he didn't. It's Dijon Paul. I got the double D's for everybody to suck on and play with. The biggest in the game. I know you love my double D's. I'm the sugar bear, baby. Yeah, check this out. Dijon Paul, Lush One, you need to, you called me a gummy bear and that made me hungry. That stimulated every single piece of insulin that's fighting with my type 2 diabetes and made me realize that I had to talk about you overdosing on drugs, even though I'm three cinnamon rolls away from my own deathbed. But you take too many drugs, Lush One. You take too many drugs. The Sassy Auntie Podcast gives you three snaps and a neck twirl. What does my co-host, the human tapeworm, have to say? Uh, yeah, L- Lush shouldn't do so many drugs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's l- 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 shouldn't do so. What, what, what was we talking about again? Hey, fuck you! And then look, look, look. Wait, 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 wait. Is 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 a, a, a blood or a grip, bro? Shouts to my boy Dijon Paul. Had to make a response. It's all love, homeboy. It's all love. But you wished death upon me. Like, it's so funny that I be making jokes when all I'm trying to do is stimulate some dialogue, have a conversation, and I make a joke about gummy bears, you being in an overgrown gummy bear, wearing motherfucking uh, Santiali Lanvin. I mean, like, just to be fair, I checked on the Lanvin website, and they don't make anything in 6X. So there's no way... That landman was real. It's all good, though. You feel me? Everybody might be guilty. Some more than others. Not looking at your co-host when I say this. Some might be guiltier than others when it comes to wearing fake designer. Um, I don't know what the tapeworms got to say about that or not. But regardless, I just want to say, like, um, you know, for someone that's publicly spoken about having addiction issues and, um, you know, wanting to unalive themselves, telling them to go overdose might not have been the most tactful thing, might not have been the most respectful. I mean, the comments sure as hell don't like it, but guess what? It doesn't offend me. That shit does not bother me. I've been called a lot worse by a lot greater men, so it's not going to really have too much effect on me. And I'm not going to jump out the window and because, you know, there's been a lot of other things that I've said regarding you. You, you just happen to catch that on the Reddit. So I'm not going to jump out on jump out the window and make it seem like I, um, you know, uh, know anything about what you've done in the past, what any of your accolades or lack there are, are of. I just know that I've been in this industry for two and a half decades and responsible for over a billion views of the content that I've curated on YouTube through battle rap and adjacent cultures. Um, I know that I was Chief Keith's A&R and signed him to a million dollar deal. I know that, you know, I've worked with uh, Drake and his camp. I know everything that I've done my litany of accomplishments. I know about my records that have millions of streams. I know about the tours that I've been on. I know that I've touched every six continents this year. You've or, uh, uh, it's Since my career has started, I've been everywhere except for Antarctica and this motherfucker. With that being said, um, I'm unaware of what you've contributed to have such nuanced dialogue, making comments like there's no meth in Compton. Um, okay. But, um, look, I don't know, just like you don't know. So you might have, for all I know, you might have worked with Quincy Jones. You you might be Kendrick Lamar's ghostwriter, for all I know. Um, It's just from all the research that I've done and all the conversations that have been had pertaining to you, it seems to be that, you know, since the Clubhouse era, of the internet is when you made your emergence in this industry and your contributions to the culture don't really far supersede that of critiquing and downgrading Los Angeles based artists. Now that's all good. You feel me? Like, but just know that I made a joke about gummy bears. I didn't say something cruel. Like I didn't call you 
the poster child for America's obesity epidemic. I didn't say that you were the living embodiment of a sweaty Teddy Graham with type two diabetes. You know what I mean? Like I didn't say anything that, um, I didn't say that you were one cinnamon, cinnamon bun away from heart failure. I didn't say that if somebody slapped you, onion rings would fly from your fucking skull like Sonic, like Sonic the Hedgehog, except for yours are deep fried in batter. I didn't say anything of that nature, you know? Like, I didn't say that your blood type was cherry Pepsi or anything mean like that, fool. Like, all I did was make a joke about gummy bears, and um, you had a very sassy response, per usual, and uh, wished death upon me, which is... Again, very, very, very extreme. So I'm just going to reevaluate what I said earlier. You're not a gummy bear, bro. You're not a gummy bear. You're the gelatinous mass that occurs when three gummy bears melt together and form one pure entity of saturated fat. That's what you are. Wearing Santi Alley 5X fake Lanvin who doesn't have the intellectual capacity, knowledge of the culture, or experience in any degree to hold up adequate di debate or dialogue regarding anything to do with hip-hop culture with someone of my stature with someone of my experience and someone of my intelligence you just don't so of course you're gonna fucking duck and dive and you're gonna try to run your mouth and you're gonna try to say a bunch of extra shit that don't really matter you feel me because at the end of the day you know like you are the poster child for processed foods and that's just you and that's just the way you go that's the way you gonna move that's the way you gonna get down and it's all to the g but just know whenever you're ready to have an intellectual conversation regarding your list and the inconsistencies it contains and the damage that it's done and the division that it's caused in the la hip-hop scene and beyond i'm open to it in a non-aggressive, man-to-man, mind-to-mind conversation. Everybody else that's in and around it, completely irrelevant. But I'm ready for that dialogue whenever you are, Chief. And I know if you, and if you're not trying to do it, I know it's because you know that you don't know as much about hip hop. You're not as experienced in hip hop. You don't have the understandings of the nuances of what makes a dope MC or a project dope or what why what difficulties artists today are facing as opposed to the several different climates that have come prior to this you might not you know have that understanding because you weren't a part of this culture you weren't a part of the scene you were casually observing from the outside and this is the result with that being said you feel me enjoy the rest of your day try to you feel me you know um take good care of yourself Watch what you eat because you could not stand up without breaking a sweat. That scale caused more fucking terror in your soul than a diamond tester around Almighty Suspect. Um, like, like literally, it's it, it, it's sad to watch. Like, you had Twinkies falling out of your pocket when you move on the on the couch. And you want to talk about substance abuse issues? Do I'm gonna do a challenge? Give you issue a challenge, my guy. Go a week without drinking on the podcast, and then we can talk. And keep in mind, excessive drinking, when you have cardiovascular issues such as that, is a very, very deadly combination that should be taken seriously. With that being said, please like, share, subscribe, and indulge in all the content we got for you. Once again, your partner play a lush uno, and we about this biatch.